Let's talk about Animal Crossing. The series made its original premiere here in the West in 2002, and since then has had three extra installments since then to the main series. The game was originally in Japan only, on the Nintendo 64, however it went by a different name, Animal Forest. The game was planned to be on the N64 DD system, but ended up being just a standalone cartridge due to the commercial failure of the DD. Now when there is something that is kind of strange, like the N64 DD, and ends up being a commercial failure in Japan, that really speaks volumes to me. Because it's Japan. If the N64 DD wasn't going to make it there, it wasn't going to make it anywhere. Animal Crossing was basically a port from the Japanese version of the game on the N64, but given the GameCube's superior hardware, a multitude of content and options were implemented in making a lot of firsts for the series. Not including the N64 game, there are four main installments in the franchise. Animal Crossing for the GameCube, Animal Crossing Wild World for the DS, Animal Crossing City Folk for the Wii, and Animal Crossing A New Leaf for the 3DX. All these games bring something new and different to the table, and it's always been my favorite, the one in the GameCube, in comparison to the three newer ones. So, that's the video I'm doing then today. It's also the title of the video. Let's do it. So Animal Crossing is a real-life sim. The game takes advantage of the GameCube's internal clock to regulate the game's timekeeping in real time. That basically means that if it's, let's say, 7pm in reality, it's 7pm in the game. This also goes for the date in the game, and can even reflect day and night cycles, seasons, correlating weather, and even holidays. When you play the game for the first time without any save data on your memory card, you basically get asked questions on what the time and date are, and so on to get everything set up. Then once that's done, it throws you into the game's intro. So you're taking a train ride to the new village of where it is you're going to be moving to. This guy, Rover, will come up to you and start conversating with you. He seems real nice and whatnot, and when I was a kid I always thought it was a nice gesture for someone to come up and be friendly with you to help pass the time of a long trip. However, now that I'm an adult, to be honest, I can't see Rover the same way anymore. I'm just a little too jaded. Before I thought, ah, oh, this dude seems pretty cool, coming up to chit chat, that's nice. Now I'm like, the fuck does this guy want? You gonna ask me for money? Probably a drug addict. And being the crotchety older person that I am now, I'm gonna be a little rude with him. Basically this is the part of the game where you name yourself and name your village. Let's see, what am I gonna name myself? Let's go with... Milky... 64. Hmm... Why did I pick that name?! And let's name the town... McKellen. Yeah, McKellen. That's where I'm from, after all. So it shouldn't be that bad. Nothing bad happens here. Oh... Okay, well there's that. But still! You know, I'm even more suspicious of him now, because I'm being extremely rude and he keeps wanting to talk to me. Like a murderer. He ends up asking what my plans are to move into McAllen, and I say that I really don't have a plan. Despite my contempt, he's eager to help and gives Tom Nook a call to let him know that I'm coming into town. Damn, a cell phone in 2002? You gotta have some seriously good credit to have a cell phone in 2002. I don't trust this guy. Ain't no one with good credit a good Samaritan. I learned that the hard way. Ah, and here we are in McAllen. Immediately we're introduced to Tom Nook. He's the game's shopkeeper as well as realtor. He takes you to pick one of four houses that you'll end up buying from him. take this one. You know, because I, I, I like the red roof. 
And that's how I base all my large high-risk investment choices, based on the color of its roof. So the house ends up costing, reasonably, 19,800 bells. WHAT?! 20 grand for a fucking studio apartment?! Tom Nook, you penny-pinching bastard! Okay. Bitch better have my money! Y'all should know me well enough! Bitch better have my money! So, I'm sure as you can tell, I don't have enough money to pay Nook for his house outright. So I don't know what that damn deviant rover told him to get him to think that I had the cash to do this. So after this issue, Nook asks you to come do some work at his shop at Nook's Cranny. So this is where he sends you on a number of errands that serves as the game's means to get you to get familiar with the village you've moved into. Every village is procedurally generated to a certain degree. Not on the level of Minecraft or anything, of course, but I don't think I've ever seen two villages alike. During your errands and tasks set in place by Tom Nook, you go throughout the town and meet all the villagers within it. You can also meet the mayor, Tortimer, who hangs around the fountain. He usually only comes around during certain events that take place during certain days. You can find out what celebrations take place and on what day by looking into the journal that you get with your house. There are also bulletins that get put up on the bulletin board a few days before an event takes place. So I guess now is as good a time as any to introduce you to this guy, Mr. Rossetti. He comes every time you reset the game to scold you for not being able to do that in real life, so you shouldn't be resetting the game as it's a real life simulator. Fuck that. I can overdraft from my bank so I can reset the damn game if I want. Besides, that's not even the case all the time. Sometimes the power goes out, as you just saw, and even if it's for just a couple of seconds, it's enough to turn off the game. Now that's not fair. I at least have 24 hours to put the money back in my bank for overdrafting if I want. Damn mole. He'll become incorrigible the first time he comes to your door, but gradually if resetting persists, he'll tend to get more and more aggravated with you. Once the shackles of employment come off, you can then purchase things from Nook and go about your business and give yourself your own objectives. This always kind of bugged me, but once you're done working for Tom Nook, pretty much every time you enter a store after that, he treats you as if he doesn't know you. I guess he doesn't want any friction from former workers from his dysfunctional ass temp agency. So now what? Well, there's a number of things we can do. We can dig up fossils, we can go fishing, we can go bug catching, or go talk to the villagers. There's a museum that's in the village and you can donate all the things that I just mentioned. Blathers is the curator of the museum and gives you a breakdown of everything you donate. And much like his name suggests, he doesn't shut up and has to explain everything. He just goes on and on about any particular detail when given something. The amount of scrutiny and analysis that goes into even the most mundane throwaway of a detail can be hovered over and capitalized on continuously. Just an ongoing influx of information about something that, for most people, would be overwhelming to the point of making them turn tail and leave. Just being constantly bombarded by various specifics of the most droll aspect of any given item. I mean, have you ever met anybody like that? Someone that will keep just finding new things to talk about from just this one thing and will go on and on and on and on and on, feeling like they're doing a service to be as descriptive as possible, when so much less can do just fine for the majority of others. It's like turning 5 minutes into 50 minutes just by being a pretentious douchebag. It's like, dude, just shut the fuck up! The fuck, man, again? Let's go fishing. Fishing is fun in its own way. Have I donated these to the museum yet? No. Well, fuck it. I gotta pay Nook back. Different fish, understandably, fetch different prices. You could sell them to earn money and use this money to pay off Nook for your house. I don't know how the economy works in this game, but it would explain why there isn't shit here. You got two cops on duty, sorta, an empty ass museum, there's KK Slider, a dog who plays out front of the train station, he plays music which you can then take and put into your tape deck to listen to later. He comes every Saturday night and you can go up to him and make a request for a song. Bro, can you play some Metallica?
Bro, can you play some Dragon Force? Bro, can you play some red hot chili peppers? California. You also have the post office, which is to send mail, duh, but also to pay off your debt. You have these two ducks that work there named Pelly and Phyllis. Pelly is such a nice, well-mannered young lady that pays a compliment to the term duck face. Actually, no, wait, I think they're pelicans. Phyllis? Well, she's an attitude having, smart mouth, fork tongue, bitch. And that's why you asked me staying on second shift. Once you pay off your debt, you can go follow up with Nook and surprise, surprise, he knows your first name again. He'll offer to make your house bigger, seeing as how you paid off your debt, but of course, this isn't free, so this will have a bill attached to it. Wash, rinse, repeat. You fucking serious? Oh my god! Fucking power! Stupid mall! Oh, look at that. N Nook moving up in the world. Got himself a bigger and better store now. Money, baby. Money, baby. Money, baby. Yeah. Money, baby. Money, baby. Money, baby. Money, baby. Yeah. I assume you use the money to upscale a store, and he typically does this after you pay him back for an upgrade done to your house. I wonder how much of that money he spent on building my house. You can do this several times to get your house even bigger. You can get a larger main room, then even bigger beyond that. A basement, and then finally a second floor. For every upgrade to your house you do, it does take until the following day before the changes are complete. But fuck that. I don't got that kind of time anymore. Time to alter the internal clock to my benefit. Hey, look, I paid my rent in real life, okay? I, I earned this. Messing with the clock doesn't help that much with money, however. Or does it? Every Sunday morning, a boar named Joan, Sow Joan, will come to town to sell turnips. The value for these changes from day to day, like the stocks. So with these, you could play the stock market. Do you get it? So the point is to buy these in bulk and then sell them to Nook for more than what you paid for them. Common sense, right? Usually he'll buy them for more than what you paid on average, but not by much. But if you're patient, one day out of the week, he'll buy the turnips for an insane amount each. No. 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 Oh, okay, that's not that. Okay, that's not that. How much is that for every... Oh. My. God. I've got Okay, just a little finagling and we've got ourselves a fully loaded house in, I don't know, an hour? Not counting all the power outages, of course. So there are some specific characters that we'll visit every couple days and all the villagers will talk about it beforehand and we'll see the date of when they are to arrive. Wendell the Walrus is a starving artist. At least that's the intended pun. If you give him some fish, he'll be so happy and give you a one-of-a-kind wallpaper for your house that you can't get from anyone else in the game. Sahara is a carpet merchant and will sell you a rare carpet for money along with a trade of any other carpet you may have around. Katrina is another special visitor who will tell you a fortune. Most of the time it's bullshit, but other times it can either make you super lucky with money or make you chip all over the place. Crazy Red is a fox who is a merchant. Don't mind the very obvious black 
from the words black market X'd out in a bright red X, that's just how he rolls. He sells you shit that you can get from pretty much anywhere else and almost always at a higher price. Sometimes he actually does have her items hub, most notably of these are paintings, but sometimes even those are trash because they can be fakes. So pretty much he sells you just a bunch of ordinary stuff as if it was the last one on the planet. Oh, you mean I can buy this chair? This this iris chair? I can buy this? You mean you mean this same one of a kind super rare chair that I also happen to find thrown away in the dump? Yeah, this definitely seems like McCallan to me. Now, if I can be serious for just a second, I do want to point out again that this is my favorite Animal Crossing game in the series. Mostly because I enjoy the Acre system, and this is the only game in the series to do that. Every installment after this game would begin to use this globe type effect, and I just really can't stand it. It feels less like a, well, like an animal forest. The globe effect, for one, does call attention to the game's graphical shortcomings and also makes the scope of the village that you live in seem so much smaller in scale. For me, that kind of stripped away some of the wonder that Animal Crossing would leave players with. Another great advantage that this game has over its successors is its library of NES games that you can find. My first time playing Balloon Fight was thanks to Animal Crossing, and I'm sure many others have similar stories to this one. Damn. I guess I time traveled too much. The game thinks I've been away for a long time. Weeds will crop up around your town over time if you don't get rid of them as you see them. Your house will also get infested with roaches. Oh wait, is this all? <laughs> is this all the roaches? Man, this ain't shit! Look, I'll show you a real cockroach infestation if you've ever seen one. And it's clean too. Do you see how clean the refrigerator is? I can't even see them at this angle. There's a lot of them. Oh, fuck. Yep. Are you sure the camera's getting it? Oh, yeah. It's getting it better than I can see. Yeah. That was real. We had to move. Of course, you can make friends with the villagers. You can talk with them, and often they'll tell you some senseless nonsense, but it's actually very endearing and one of the series' biggest charms. Sometimes with talking to them, they'll just give you stuff for free, and also sometimes they'll want to buy stuff that you have on you. It's kind of a wild card, but it also keeps you wanting to talk to them just to see what can happen next. Hey Frigga, what's going on? Yeah, no, no, change is good. Change is good. Wait, you did what? She painted my roof a different shade of red? Hell no! Oh, that penguin have an ass bitch. Oh really? My choice of red wasn't good enough? You had to fuck with my red? Yeah, that's right. I don't want to be your friend. Don't touch my roof. And you know what? While we're at it, you can go ahead and move out. Don't bother leaving a letter either. I don't give a shit. You know, that actually reminds me. You could pass around letters to other villagers. But you know what? Even when I was younger, I never really saw the point in writing letters to the villagers. I mean, they're my damn neighbors. They are literally a stone's throw away. Why would I want to write a letter? Maybe if they got locked up, put in a zoo, whatever, a, a pound, a kennel. Ah, this guy. This guy is Gulliver. He washes up on shore every couple of weeks and tells you some bogus story on how he fell off of his ship. He does give you a rare piece of furniture when you listen to his BS story though, so that's pretty cool of him. What isn't cool, however, is how RNG the factoring of the items are. It's nice to get a shogi piece for the first time. It isn't nice to get these three weird mouth things in a row. <sighs> you know what? Screw this. Time to exploit this game to its maximum. You know, there's codes you can tell Nook at a store to get pretty much anything you want. Does it defeat the purpose of making an effort? Yeah. But whatever. I'm trying to make a video here. Don't judge me. Aw, oh, dude, come on, man. Really? Again? Fuck. Better gear up to start getting nagged at by Rossetti. You wouldn't. 
No. You can't. You won't escape my wrath! Niggas about to get stabbed. 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 Hey everybody, this is Derek64, and I just wanted to make a little insight here saying thanks for watching my video. I got other videos um, that you guys can watch too. My most recent review would be Dying Light. Um, it's kind of hard to get these videos out. Not so much hard, but it takes a lot of time, especially if you want to do a good job. You know, it could take it could take me hours just trying to find one little detail that would make a head about six seconds better but it goes a long way for me and that's the kind of um, that's the kind of production value that I want to put in my videos so uh, I mean that that's basically uh, what you get with me so uh, that's kind of why uh, if you're subscribed and you've been subscribed for a while you probably won't see any reviews uh, frequently but I do do the best I can and I'm, uh, I'm actually working on another one right now um, but yeah, dying light would be a good indicator as to what kind of uh, time frame you'd look at because dying light took me six months. Um, but I did have a lot to say and uh, dying light kind of grew into this behemoth of a video. Animal Crossing, I really do love Animal Crossing. I really do. It's a great game. It's a great series. I've played all of them. Uh, I have New Leaf. I haven't really had a chance to play New Leaf too much, um, but I've played it enough to know that my favorite still in the series would be the first, the first game. Um, as far as the video, if it came across that I didn't like it, that's not the case at all. It's just more of a satirical approach, and I wanted it to be a, um, I wanted to be very eccentric with uh, some of the things that people can kind of say are problems, so. I do do other videos. I do uh, unboxings. I like unboxing videos. I tend to like unboxing videos. Uh, so, you know, that's something I've kind of adopted to do myself because I like them so much I want to make my own. Uh, you'll probably see me do on, on a fairly regular basis um, uh, uh, Indie Box. I really do like Indie Box. I really do like, uh, you know, Steam games and indie games and stuff. So that's, you know, pretty much that's in my ballpark. I really like that. So you'll probably see those as far as unboxings on a somewhat regular basis uh, because, you know, collector's editions, they're expensive and they're infrequent. So as far as unboxings, uh, in contrast to that, indie box is pretty much what I'll be doing. Um, I also got a top 10. I got one top 10. It's on uh, the top 10. Uh, mood music tracks in gaming uh, Check it out. You know, it's more of an intellectual approach as far as how I like to break down uh, Something in a game and then I guess rate it as far as from you know 10 to 1 uh, But you know what a top 10 is so uh, I do have more plan in the future. It's my only one I do have more plan so keep an eye out for that um, <clears throat> I do also have a Let's Play channel, because who doesn't have a Let's Play channel these days? It's called A Game for Freddy. I kind of dedicated it, um, and slash named it after, uh, my little brother, uh, my younger brother. He's, uh, he's in school, he's in college, uh, he's up north. We don't see each other that much, so this is kind of paying homage to when we were younger and we were able to play games, you know, like kids were able to do. Uh, I don't see him very often, so that's kind of where uh, this idea of making a Let's Play channel, but also having it some purpose, uh, kind of pays towards. Um, there's more to it than that, but bottom line, that's basically what um, a game for Freddy is. It's a Let's Play channel. I'll have a link. I'll have links to all these in the descriptions if you want to check them out in the future. Uh, if you if you would, I'd really appreciate it because I I do try to make um, content that a lot of people would enjoy watching. Also, real quick, I want to make a shout out to Luke Morse. He's a great guy. He's a cool dude. I've been subscribed to him for many years now, and uh, 
I truly do feel uh, blessed that, you know, I was able to actually kind of collaborate with them in a sense of uh, being able to, you know, chit chat with them, talk with them. He's a real mellow guy. Um, you know, I sent him a bunch of broken video game stuff because, you know, I don't got enough of that. And, um, uh, you know, he checked out some of my videos and he genuinely liked them. So I guess that's why he, uh, he felt compelled to kind of give me a little bit of a shout out when I sent him a big box of, of, uh, gaming junk that he ended up doing a, a, a video with. So, uh, Luke, if you're hearing this man again, dude, I really appreciate it. You are a fantastic person. And I can never thank you enough because, you know, a big timer like you, because you are a big timer compared to somebody like me, uh, you know, it really, it, it, it's a good motivation for uh, the little guy to keep, keep going as far as, uh, you know, having a good head as far as trying to get somewhere with the whole YouTube scene. So thanks, Luke. You are, <laughs> you are the man. Anyways, you guys, I guess that about wraps it up. Um, if uh, you like the video, please give it a like. Um, if you're not subscribed already, please subscribe so you can catch any content that I put out in the future. I do got more stuff in store, and it's already being worked on and made, so it should be a little bit more frequent than usual. Uh, that's what I've been trying to go for. If, I like to tell everybody this, if you have any friends that you think would like the video, please share it with your friends and, and let them know what's going on with Derek64. Um, but other than that, you guys, again, uh, really, I appreciate it. Thank you so much for watching my video. And uh, again, until next time, peace. But so much less can do just fine for the majority of others. Are you yes, babe. Sorry. What is it? What is it? What is it? Oh, um, you can hang out with me. We'll find them.